Book 21 of the Odyssey, and it's the great bow, the moment we've all been waiting for as the uh, tale reaches its climax. Um, so for the overview, obviously, the whole of Book 21 is all about the bow, isn't it? And the key events really address what the bow is doing in the story. Why is it here? Well, firstly, it's a technical thing, isn't it? It's to win Penelope's hand. And she'd said at the end of Book 19 that actually um, the winner of the contest will marry her. Uh, she said the hateful day is drawing very near. Um, and she says, whoever proves the handiest at stringing the bow and shoots an arrow through each of the 12 axes, with that man I will go. So there's the uh, the, the focus. The suitors all think that if they can manage to, uh, to, to pass the test, they'll marry Penelope. For the plot more generally, it's a proof of Odysseus's identity, isn't it? So the scar on his knee in book 19 is a proof of his identity to Eurycleia. He's going to prove his identity by being able to shoot through the uh, the axes. But actually, Penelope's suspicious enough to mean that he's still got to prove his identity in book 23 over the bed, which we'll come to. And then thirdly, it's the culmination of the building suspense of books 13 to 20, isn't it? Do you remember we were saying that actually... Book 13, book 17, 18, in a way, it's not as exciting as the middle section of the poem. Um, and it's deliberate on the part of Homer that he's building slowly the, the, the suspense as we move towards this climactic point of the tale. Um, and then finally, it's a practical thing. It's going to give Odysseus a weapon. Now, Telemachus has hidden all of the arms from the house. Remember, at the start of book 19, that's what he did in, um, when everybody's gone to bed. So there's no weapons in the house, except what the suitors are carrying. But Odysseus, as a beggar, certainly has no weapon. If he can get hold of the bow, he's going to have the means to kill everybody. So there's our reasons for why the bow is in the story, and this is what's actually going to happen. Now, there's some really interesting things. I mean, obviously, the story is quite simple. The bow goes around. Nobody can string it. But actually, as we get towards the end, there's this great bit where sounds show us that the climax of the story is at hand, line 393 to 416. And um, the first of those sounds is mocking laughter, isn't it? So Odysseus gets handed the bow when everybody else has failed to do it. They all think that it's going to who? A beggar who doesn't know what he's doing. And so we get all their mocking laughter. The suitors glanced at one another and one said, ha, quite the expert with a critic's eye for bows. No doubt he collects them at home or wants to make one, judging by the way he twists it about. So in a mocking way, they're laughing at him, aren't they? Um, and making jokes about his ability to, uh, to, to string the bow. Which sets itself really perfectly against line 411. Um, once he string the bow, with his right hand, he tested the string. You can imagine him plucking it as he's got it on the bow and he, and he pulls it. Uh, and it sang as he plucked it with a note like a swallow's note, um, with a sound like a swallow's note. Really nice little simple simile, not extended, just simple. Just the sound of a peep, twing, whatever it might be. I don't know what swallows sound like. Um, the result of that is the suitors being mortified. So that that single note announces that things have changed. And to confirm that, to mark the moment, there came a thunderclap from Zeus, which confirms that uh, that Zeus is on his side. So nice sounds, mocking laughter, saying Odysseus isn't up to it. The twang, which shows he has been up to it, and the thunderclap, which then shows the judgment of the gods is at hand. So sounds are really significant here in Book 21. Now, um, as far as narrative techniques, you can look in your booklet to see um, how the movement of the bow creates this sense of suspense. And um, I thought that picture at the bottom pretty much captured what it must be like if you were in ancient Greece listening to Homer. Um, the bow moves from Penelope to Eumaeus to Telemachus. Now, at this stage, it's in friendly hands. There's no threat, is there, as such. Then it goes to Leodes the young men, the other suitors, and Eurymachus. Now, at any minute, one of these guys could, could succeed, and then that's it. All he's got to do is shoot through the axes, and he's won Penelope's hand. So the tension, the suspense builds. We think, what's the bow doing off with other people? 
and then it returns to Eumaeus and it's on its way to Odysseus. So the suspense builds even within the, the, the book as well, doesn't it? As Homer plays with our sense of what might be about to happen. Now, at the same time, um, the character of Telemachus has been kind of developed for us during Book 21. We've learned some things about Telemachus, but look at how um, he is actually coming into his character in Book 21. We've discussed he can't be a full hero because if he's a full hero, we don't need Odysseus. But Telemachus, as the son of Odysseus, still needs to look half decent. So there's a number of important contributions in Book 21. So firstly, he acts his part well. Uh, line 100 to uh, to to 125. Um, he knows what's happening, and so he says, "Go on, give it, give it a go, all of you. See if you can do it." He knows what's coming. Then he shows self-control. Line 125 to 135. He gets a go at stringing the bow. Um, three times he might made it quiver in his efforts to bend it. Three times his strength fell, though he still hoped to see the fourth time. He put such pressure on the bow that he might well have strung it if Odysseus had not shaken his head and said to him, no, 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 don't do that. You're going to ruin the thing. So a young man who could have felt so proud of himself for stringing the bow, he would have ruined the plan. So he shows the self-control and he doesn't string it. Lines 344 to 59, he takes control of the situation, gets the women safely out just before uh, the battle and the fighting is about to happen. And then in line 365, he intervenes. Uh, Eumaeus gets told off. Um, about um, passing the bow to the beggar. Um, but Telemachus says, come on, bring the bow, old fellow. You'll soon find you can't obey us all. And, and so actually he intervenes and makes sure the bow does get to Odysseus. He plays a vital role in Book 21. So there we are, Book 21. It's as we move to the climax of the tale, but Homer just holds back and builds the suspense a little bit further by using the, uh, the test to make sure that we see quite what is coming in Book 22.